Hey, everybody, it's Joe Trippi, and welcome back to That Trippy Show. This week, another big win for Democrats. You'd think at some point the media narratives would change, but nope. You, you won't believe. <laughs> yeah, this you... is Newsweek, my friends. Their headline, Democrats' Joe Biden problem got worse with special election win. It's kind of like the New York Times pitch bot where, no, you know, yeah. that... that... Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the pitch spot, except it's it's for real. It's with, real, and it, it, it's Democratic consultants that are telling them that it, it's bad for Democrats. I mean, it's yeah, gosh, it's just you know, unbelievable. It, it's, I know, I know, uh, and we'll get to Simon. I know Simon calls us the family a lot, but this yeah. is reminding me of like the worst Thanksgiving dinners I've ever had. Kind of family. Not yeah, I mean, like, how do you he he wins? A, a district that the Republicans won. <laughs> now, by the way, it was also a district Biden won. And there's 18 more of, or 17 more of these. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there, Joe. This is like the closest thing to a yeah, cold okay, open we've yeah. ever we had. Haven't, but, I haven't even. Yeah, yeah. Also, we zoom out and look at where the race is based on some key historical factors. And is Taylor Swift a psyop? A surprising number of your neighbors agree that she is. <laughs> Alex, I mean, we're talking a lot of your neighbors, folks. Alex, it's too many, but where, we'll get yeah, there. Where yeah. should we let's, get started? Let's, let's go back to Queens and Nassau County, where uh, Tom, obviously Tom Swosey won the, the seat. I think he won by about eight. Polls had it at like five, which we'll get to do. That was obviously the Santos seat. Uh, you can still probably get a cameo of George Santos saying something dumb about the race if you want to pay him money. But again, I would not trust him with my credit card. Joe, you mentioned the narrative at the top. What did you see from this race? I mean, this is just incredible to me. Uh, this was a district that Biden won by eight points. And then, like, I, as a, another reporter said today, well, Biden won by eight, then Santos won by eight, and now, oh, Swazi only won by eight. It's a 16-point move away from Biden uh, to Santos, if you're going to count that way, and it's a 16-point back move back, and there's 17 other members who are in these kinds of places. To, so, the, so, so the story isn't, hey, 17 other Republicans are in trouble. Right. As we reported on last week's show, after Maga Mike Johnson made them run the plank for a vote that they lost that was near suicide. But we'll, get, we'll forget that. But, but he makes them walk the plank. And the story isn't there's 17 other possible Republicans who could be in trouble in these kinds of districts. No, no, it's no, it's, it's the just Biden somehow problem. means it's a it's a big problem for Biden. So it's on, on the one hand. So when when results were coming in, I was watching and I was thinking in my head, how are they going to spin this into a Biden problem? On the one hand, if Sulzi wins by thirty points, okay, Biden is a Biden's a drag. He's he's underperforming. You know, he's underperforming what the the member did. If if and if Swazi loses, okay, Biden's a drag. But if he matches him exactly, which is pretty much what he did, there is like no argument that could possibly be made. Pull like I, you could yeah. see it going either way, except for a straight match. And like you said, it's a sixteen point swing from Santos. I mean, I guess you could order. <sighs> you could argue that Santos that 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 Trump isn't as not as toxic as Santos, I, or are they arguing that Santos is less toxic than Trump? I, I don't, I don't, I can't even get into the logic here. Anyway, the biggest uh, things uh, thing here is that we look. Democrats only need four seats to win back the House in November, even if everything else stays the same. And so, like, if, if you've been listening, you know, Dems have we, Democrats. We have momentum right now, and Democrats will gain at least five seats based on. Just the new maps that have been drawn, that they, they that have been redrawn, some of them by courts. The one in Alabama, where they, you know, the, there's definitely going to be a, a real shot at two Democratic districts down there, where where the legislature st is still trying to mess around and keep it to one, but that's not going to happen. Um, New York, et cetera. So look, with this outcome, I think you're going to see a lot of the other 
Republicans in those 17 Biden won districts uh, starting to freak a little bit. But uh, that'll be, be interesting. Do they move away? Yeah. Well, including in New York, by the way. No, you're right, Alex. It's, you know, so uh, because a lot of them are in New York, some of them are in California. I mean, it's, it's going to be an interesting thing to see. Do they keep towing the crazy MAGA Trump line, you know, when, it, when it's clear that MAGA is losing? Uh, lost in 2020, lost in eight. You know, I mean, you know, you look at 2022, it was because of MAGA and people pushing back that the red wave stopped. It wasn't because the economy was great. I mean, it's like, this is like, but they're still going to say the economy bad. No, well, the economy's a hell of a lot better. So we'll see. If you look at the issues and, and, Simon previewed this on our Tuesday special show, which if you haven't listened, uh, we were right about a lot of things that, the two of you mostly, but uh, it, the two things that that really were on air in this district were immigration and abortion. Democrats, specifically the candidate Swozy, ran on immigration. He hit the GOP hard on it, and it worked. And Democrats, national Democrats, did a ton of air cover for him on abortion. The combo there looks like it was pretty deadly. I mean, an eight point win in a swing district is pretty close to a landslide. Like that yeah, is a well, resounding repudiation repudiation of MAGA. It's also a special in which the Republicans were pulling out all the stuff. I mean, both parties do in specials. So, but I'm just saying it wasn't like, oh, underfunded, you know, any of the 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 usual uh excuses. Um now, now interestingly, because it is uh one of those districts where Biden won, um there wasn't a lot of you know, she she wasn't out there. She got herself a little, you know, crosswise with the Trump thing. You know, she wouldn't like welcome his endorsement or anything like that. Uh, he didn't endorse her. Um, but that's this is going to be the kind of problem that all the, the candidates in these districts face. Well, that after I, what, he just ripped her the yeah, next right, day, of right? Course, it's, like, I, it's like called her like yeah, a foolish yeah, woman yeah, or something. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. But anyway, look, there are two seats in New York. That as you were alluding to, Alex, that that this has an impact on New York Four, which is next to it, and, and the the and the Long Island seat, New York One, held by Nick Lalota, both are real possibilities for Democratic uh, pickups uh, this fall. And again, when you're in a situation now where we only need four more, if those two fall, those are going to be two races to watch. For the rest of this year, uh, see who gets the who runs on the Democratic side. But uh, we get some good candidates there. Those are, are are big pickups. But you know, once again, you know, the polling made this race seem you know seem closer than it than it was. They had it as a toss up. They had it as I think one had yeah, a yeah. good poll had it plus five. But like there was a lot of hand wringing. Like oh, but. Eight points, a lot of uh, that's that's well outside a lot of margins of polling error. No, no, even in only, a low the, turnout election. Yeah, and the only poll that had it close was a mess. I mean, I, I looked at, I can't remember which one it was, but there was a poll that had it right on the dot, except it had it was like oversampled thirteen by thirteen percent Democrats or something. I mean, in other words, there was no none of the polling was anywhere near on target in this thing, even though they were all out there saying, right. well, and this is a recurring problem this year on every yeah. level. The only poll that was like on point, like close to what the margin was, was a disaster. When you looked at the sample, uh, it was like had way too many Democrats. I can't remember what was wrong with it, but I remember looking at the poll and going, this one's completely crap too, you, you know, but that's exactly, you know, what happened in 2022. With the you know polling you know, you know the big red wave was going to come it didn't and you know it's the same thing now when you look at all the presidential polling that, that that's out there um, you you know it doesn't really matter we all you know particularly on the presidential side this it's not going to be decided the Nash the head to head doesn't matter it's all going to be decided in states six or seven and by a couple hundred thousand people this in a special election. The reason it's hard to get the polling right anyway is, again, and, and the same in a general, in the end, the only way you get, get it right is if you, you're making some decision about what turnout's likely to be. What's, that, what's the, the model 
that you're trying to model, you know, about turnout and everybody got it wrong again. And so, you know, and you try now you're trying to in a national poll for president, you're, you're trying to model something 12 months from now, you know, or thereabouts, not not less than 12 now, but scarily anyway, it's less than 10. Yeah, now. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's not scary. I can't wait to get there. We got to do a lot of work in between, but that'll be fine. But anyway, um, I just think that that, it, you know, again, the polling, you know, was off. It'll continue to be off. It's not just another instruction, instructive learning lesson in why. Uh, well, I mean, these were all polls that were happening in real time close to the election. But again, trying to figure one 10 months out is just a, you know, just wrong, particularly on head to head, particularly with the Electoral College on the presidential side. One, you know, one thing, last thing on this before we move on, but one thing under the hood and and our friend Tom Bonnier pointed this out, but AAPI voting specifically in that district, um, Swosey won really big with them is what it's starting to look like. And I think like a third of the Queen's turnout was AAPI, which is pretty high turnout. A lot of people are assuming and, and going back to 20, a, a, a Asian American mm-hmm. Pacific Islander turnout was was really important for Biden. And a lot of the 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 pun is uh, I know the polls are sample you talk about sampling they're assuming that turnout is going to tank or not be out for the yeah. Democrats. This was like a very clear data point that those assumptions are completely false. Yeah, well, that, that I mean, they're, they're they're again, it's because you're trying to model something and you they they these pollsters make assumptions. So if they're already assuming that there's there won't be a, as high an AAPI turnout, then their model underscores those people. And that's why they were all off. That's one reason they were all off. In other words, that's what's going on here. It's a, it's a, a, a real problem. And the, the, the other one is just how emphatically, no matter what the outcome, the press wants to say it's a problem for Biden. It's just, you know, it's like baked in the They're going to say it after he wins. If he wins well, yeah, in November, yeah. he's going to say a Joe Biden victory is a problem for Joe Biden. Yeah, just watch. It, they will. They will. It's amazing. So good time for a, a quick listener question. Uh, this is from Mark in Manchester. If Dems, by whatever path, took the House majority before November, um, so in the next month or two, what could they practically get to Joe Biden's desk in the remaining months? It, it, what would be the best policy and or the best politics? So, Joe, in a hypothetical where the Democrats have the House, is there anything they can or should do to, to move this narrative and, and help Joe Biden a little bit? Well, I look, I mean, there's tons of things at that point, because you've got, the, you know, the, 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 the Senate on Ukraine, on Israel, on uh, a border on, deal, on border deal that would all like change overnight. It, they'd all be by one vote, but they'd change overnight. What would be fascinating in that situation? Would any of those 18, you know, 17 uh, remaining Republicans in, in uh, the Biden, Biden states. one states? Yeah. Would they start to come over with three or four of them come over on things like Ukraine. I to mean, these are all people, yeah, 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 to ch- try to save their jobs because they'd have to keep voting against things that were passing that were popular. You know, I mean, if you're right. voting and, and um, right now, because do... they have no incentive whatsoever, they're damned if they right. do, they're damned if they don't, right. they might lose but, a primary, they're going to lose a general. Right. And so, you know, if you think about just the border, for example, they've got a better shot voting for one that's going to pass anyway. So they'd be for it instead of, you know, uh, uh, again, being against a, you know, a, a popular, uh, much more conservative and tougher immigration bill uh, than people can think, you know, you know, than people would have expected. So that would be the interesting play there. So well, thanks, Mark, for that. Joe, after the special episode we dropped on Tuesday, we've gotten a ton of questions, a lot of positive feedback. And there was one person who asked about, and I think it was, quote, that guy who predicted Trump in 16, unquote. Uh, Joe, we've talked about this on a show before. He he did, and you can get to this, uh, the, the guy, I think it's Alan Lickman. He's a professor yeah. at American University. He he published recently an op-ed, I think, in USA Today, or Newsweek, I can't remember. I, don't th- I think I'm conflating Newsweek with the terrible headline earlier. But he was one <laughs> of the people who called Trump in 16. He was one of the only people who got it right. He's now saying that what he saw in 16 is working against Trump, and he didn't make a call, but he's pointing out that in those kind of key factors, which I'm curious your thoughts on, Biden is looking better and better. Uh, yeah, no, look, uh, this is 
you know, from, as you was pointing out, American University professor Alan Lickman, uh, who he, you know, he coined the phrase keys to the White House in a, a book that he wrote in, in the uh, 80s, I think, called uh, Predicting the White House. And uh, by the way, he's called every single one of them um, along the way. Uh, he's got 13 keys to victory. Um, and right, right now, um, five of them are, are in favor of Joe Biden. Only three favor Trump. And the rest are up for grabs, but all of them are trending Biden. So right now, you know, his, his projection would be uh, that Biden would win. And this isn't on polling data, by the way. This is all just different factors that have always uh, been a deciding factor in presidential races. I, one of them is, you, you know, he's an incumbent running for re-election, which makes sense because Rep you know, you know, incumbent presidents uh, don't often lose. I can think of one recently. Yeah. Well, Trump. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, but usually bad. when they yeah. lose, but normally when they lose, like George Herbert Walker Bush, um, George Herbert Walker Bush was a one term president. But the reason that was the case was because the normal exhaustion of two terms of a president, when you follow and you win, for the third term, when your vice president wins, it's, there's even a right. That's there's 12, such years. A, 12 yeah. years. And that urge to change things really, really can be a, a big hurdle to come over. That's usually how it happens. Uh, so, but it, it does happen, but it's, it's actually very rare, you know, not very, not facing a serious challenge uh, for the nomination. That's clearly, you know, D.D. <laughs> Phillips, not exactly a real threat. <laughs> And, and you know, and Nikki Haley is doing uh, uh, is staying around a lot longer and causing a lot more uh, frustration, obviously, with with um, uh, Trump, you know, lashing out against her husband who's serving his country and all that stuff. Uh, the usual craziness there. He's made major policy changes, uh, three gigantic bills: infrastructure, inflation reduction, the Chips Act doing the things like reentering, you, you know, the Paris Climate Accords, you know, leading the um, the alliance uh, and holding it together to take, you know, to get Ukraine what it needs uh, against Putin while Trump is with Putin on the other side. You know, uh, and the long-term economic trends, this is really important, are starting to go Biden's way. Uh, you know, per capita economic growth is higher than the growth during the past two presidential terms. And that's, people, that's a really specific point that, yeah, that Lickman it, makes. It, it's, a, it's like a very, it's a comparative thing and it's it's way higher. I think this the, under Biden so far, it's two and a half percent. Obviously this year is trending much higher than that, but from from 12 to 20, it was under 1%, yeah. which is a pretty key. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, you get, you get, you know, there's eight years of 1%. Uh, those were the last four of, Obama, I think, and and uh, and then the the four years of Trump, and then you get um, and then you get eh, maybe a, yeah, that's about right. And then you got two point five under under Biden uh, per year. That's a huge indicator of the thirteen. Then another key: the economy is not in recession. Uh, which, Pretty obvious. By the yep. way, they. They were, you know, that was going to be a big problem, recession, a big problem for Biden, a, a recession that never happened, but they The economy is not a recession. Over. Here's yeah, how that's not. a problem for yeah. Joe Biden <laughs> from Newsweek. They'll, they'll twer turn that one. Anyway, uh, what I thought was, was really interesting is the challenging party candidate is not charismatic or a national hero. And that's kind of fascinating because, like, obviously he's pretty charismatic with the MAGA. Trump, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Trump is. But I think that whatever that, that is, it, 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 we're seeing it, you know, push away. The MAGA's losing. Uh, right. I think, it's probably you know, the it, least bipartisan appeal of any candidate in history. Yeah, Maybe yes. Andrew Jackson, but like, it's close. Yeah, so I, I really take this to mean that while Trump is viewed a hero by his base, he does not have any kind of broad appeal whatsoever. He's not. Eisenhower or Grant, which is, I think, what that key is trying to point to. Uh, that's not Donald Trump. Uh, and, you know, so Biden's concerns, though, the ones that, uh, you know, I think, 
you know, have a convincing argument on why they may not uh, be as big a deal this time. Um, I mean, the big, the you know, the keys that he's not strong on. It's that they lost seats in the in the midterms is usually one of them. Well, we did lose some seats, but it wasn't anywhere near. Right. If they lose 40, we can chat about it. Yeah, but yeah they the, 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 right. So he didn't. But that's a key that goes that still goes to Trump. I mean, in the way the, 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 the these keys play out, you know, and the no, you know, but there was no red wave. And I think barely losing seats has to matter here. But, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll count that one for Trump. He also doesn't fit the charismatic or national hero bill per uh, per Lickman, uh, although I think a lot of us uh, feel he was a hero for stopping Trump in 2020 and for getting us through the pandemic uh, and 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 the miracle of us having the strongest economy of any developed country in the world coming out that coming out of the pandemic. Uh, uh, yes, it's been a tough time, but but he's done a pretty amazing uh, job. But again, he you know that key about hero and charisma. Uh, I don't think uh, I think we call that a wash uh, for for different reasons. But but anyway, and by the way, the 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 biggest threat, and I want to get to this because we're getting short on time. But the biggest threat he points out is a major third party campaign. If you look back in history, yeah. we've talked about this at length. And this is this is a it gets to a good couple of listener questions too. This is from Roberts. He says, love the show. Why are we not hearing more about a concerted effort to cross over vote and try to help prevent a Trump candidacy? Defeating Trump seems like a worthy cause, even if it puts Joe Biden's second term at risk. I'm going to pair that with a piece from our friend Jonathan Martin, who's usually very sharp. He put out a piece in Politico that I kind of mostly agree with, but it, two things can be true at a time. Uh, he said, forget no labels. Biden's third party peril is on the left. So all of that points to Joe. There are a bunch of reasons why we should be very, very worried about any kind of third party, right? Yeah. Well, the thing, the, there's two things there. The you know Third parties really won't matter in most places. I mean, all of them. I, I mean, no labels, uh, Cornell West, Jill Stein, you know, their impact on, you know, on the ballot in Idaho or California, in Idaho, right. Trump's going to get those electoral college votes in California, it'll be Biden, you know, so it doesn't really matter whether Robert Kennedy, you know, there's some Kennedy and nostalgia and he gets, you know, 10 points in California. It's, are they on the ballot in the battleground states? And thus far, Robert Kennedy Jr. is not on any of them. New, no labels is on the ballot in in Arizona and Nevada. Uh, they may be on in another uh, uh, battleground state. Uh, Jill Stein and the Greens will be on many more. But the the point is, in those states, even if you take three points, four points uh, away, that's how you you end up getting Donald Trump president of the United. He can win. Um, you know, in a state where like Arizona, that I think was decided by like 14,000 votes, um, just no labels being on the ballot with with Alex Sashlow at the top of the ticket. Uh, which could which pull, I'm not, just so. I know, I know, we're just I'm not trying to, and it was. That would be was, a really terrible way to yeah, announce it. it. Yeah. Anyway, well, they'll, they'll take anybody. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. At this point. Sorry, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I didn't mean that yeah. in the wrong way. Larry, but Larry anyway, Hogan. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Larry Hogan's now running for the Senate right. in, in Maryland. But so I there's a lot of their, their a lot of their top uh, you know, the the top folks they were trying to get have like kind of walked away. My point isn't isn't that. My point is that it's easy. This is where I think Jonathan Martin's wrong. All of them, every single one of these third parties is a spoiler for Trump and can be a spoiler for Trump. No one since George Wallace has won, you know, in, the, in it running as a third party, has won uh, electoral college votes. Even Ross Perot, who got, I think, something like 19% of the vote, didn't get a single electoral college vote. But they were all spoilers. P Ross Perot probably took enough votes to make Bill Clinton president in, in 92. You, you know, we don't need to keep going through the litany of uh, Ralph Nader, et cetera. So any one of these candidates, it'll be if they're on the ballot in those 
in those states. And one of the interesting things, and I will, I'll put in a plug for uh, Citizens to Save Our Republic, uh, which Dick Gephardt, a uh, former minority leader, leads and Alex and I help work with, they put out a, a pledge that they want these candidates to all sign saying, look, if you're not on the ballot in enough states to get 270 electoral votes, and you're not you know, first or second in five or more states by July 1st, that you, you know, if you want to keep running, great, take, but pledge on, the, on July 1st, if you don't meet those two uh, criteria, that you will withdraw your names or keep your names off the ballot in the battleground states, thereby asserting again that you're not what they say. Or I'm not running. They all say they're not running to be spoilers. Okay, there's a way to do that. If you're only on in 13 states, like no labels is on, there's no way you can get 270 electoral votes. If that's still the case in uh, on July 1st, then it's a scam at that point. Unless you take the pledge, remove yourself from any state where you could actually, by even taking three points, help Donald Trump win the election? Or is all your dark money really, really doing what a lot of us think it's doing, uh, trying to help Trump? There's a, it's taking that pledge. So we'll be, we'll be talking more about that. But yeah, I, I think everybody's wrong. The biggest, this is the, one of the keys that he points to, that is the one of the, of the keys that could move to Trump this is the one that concerns me the most, and uh, and a lot of us. Uh, it, it, it's the one that that Trump can get that forty five percent. These other candidates can pick off three, four, five percent, and and make this thing, you know, that kind of in the mid forties kind of a race. And in that kind of a race, he would probably still lose the popular vote, but Trump would have once again, like in uh, twenty sixteen which where third parties made the difference there. Jill Stein was the spoiler, among others. But that's where he, that's the only way he went. Well, I have some good news on that front. And this gets to this week, uh, the polling tidbit that I, I know you and I found just fascinating. Uh, we do have some, it seems like, covert government efforts to help Joe Biden, which is really good per the new Monmouth poll. Uh, Joe, anything catch your eye this week? I know we are trying to do this weekly. I, I know I where you're I know trying where you're to going. go. Uh, no, no, I know where you're trying to go. But I want to say one thing. One thing that just broke moments before we co- re- recorded the podcast oh, was that. Are no, you on Twitter while I was talking? That's yeah, a new no, one for no, the show. That, no, is that no labels just announced that their method of picking the candidate. Remember, they were going to do the convention. Oh, and then they said, "No, we're not going to do a convention." And then they going, said, we're I going have to my do money it. on papal conclave. What no, is the then actual they answer? To, they, then they were going to do an, uh, a, a, an online uh, vote, uh, but realized that might, you know, people like us would vote. Uh, so so they, they, uh, they, they now have said that it will be a, a blue ribbon committee of their leadership. Oh, so closed, closed committee. Got yeah, it. yeah, it will be the dark room uh, with their, uh, I'm sure with their uh, donors that help fund Trump and other, and, and Robert Kennedy Jr. and all the other weird connections between all all these third parties, and of course the people on the payroll, Nancy and, and Mark Penn. It's it, I'm sure it'll it'll I'm sure it'll be. I actually it sounds to me like it's a red ribbon committee because uh, that's certainly where their dark money's coming from. So anyway, uh, go. I, I also do know where you were taking us, and yes, you are correct, sir. We're getting to that moment, folks. Where there's some really, there's some things your neighbors are are believing that are pretty. Eighteen percent of Americans, Joe. That's nearly yeah. one in five. So if you look left and look right, like, probably one yeah. of them believes it. Thinks that Taylor Swift is quote part of a covert government effort to reelect President Biden. I don't know what to say about this other than if you want any more proof that every poll you read ever is bullshit, it's because eighteen percent of them think that Taylor Swift is a psyop. Yeah, she's a psyop. Uh, I mean, this is just incredible. It's nearly one in five Americans, and they think it's a covert government effort to reelect President Biden. This was the question. I mean, the, the, we're, we're literally in 2024, and pollsters, you know, thought to ask, hey, do you think Taylor Swift is part of a government? 
covert government effort, that means secret, folks, to reelect President Biden. I really want to have one of these pollsters on. 71% of the people who said, who are in that 18% of Americans, 71% of them are, were GOP. 83% are likely to vote for Trump. And 73% of that group believe that Biden won by fraud. Right. So it's it's that same 15% in total of basically at all the problematic polling They've been we've totally seen. radicalized, these people. I mean, I mean, if you're, you're that far, you know, you've been radicalized to that extent. But but again, you know, it's, it's you know, even okay, so if you only count like, you know, 80-ish of the 18, you're right. It's it's 15% are, you know, who believe. Now, here's what I, I'm going to predict. This is going to go up. Oh, yeah. This is going to increase because it, they'll be put, spewing this crap in there, you, you know, on, on Truth Social and, and everywhere else they can pump it. And is like, is Trump and it all try to demonize Taylor Swift and somehow, you know, I mean, it's insane. You, you know, you, you make her the enemy is not a really smart. We talked about this. That's not a smart strategy. But they'll they'll continue to do it. And also, let me tell you, this gets back to the birther movement. If we do it, we'll probably all do the same thing. We'll roll our eyes and go, oh, my God, how could anybody believe that Taylor Swift is part of a covert government effort to reelect President Biden? And so it'll go kind of unanswered or not taken seriously, and it'll grow. And just like with with when Obama had to uh, basically... Uh, release his birth certificate two years later after we all rolled our eyes for two years and then found out like, holy crap, there's a whole lot of Americans who believe who believed it. In fact, by then, the, his birth certificate had to be fake, right? So I just think that this is going to be a drum that they, for whatever reasons, continue to, to, to beat. And that my guess is, I don't know, maybe a month from now, it'll be 22%, think it, you know, 23%. He'll get more and more, probably old white guys to think that this is, that, that yeah, Taylor Swift, she's in on it. This is what I've never understood. It's like, you, you believe that the government is so incompetent and they're not doing anything right. And there's, but you also believe there's this massive deep state conspiracy that is so well cloaked that there is never any actual proof. There's this weird duality. It's like, yeah, Biden hasn't done jack shit, but he did convince Taylor Swift to run a site. Like, yeah, no, we're. I don't he, get it. He's. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. It's whatever they can feed to the base. Who is clearly into conspiracies and picks them up in a you know in a nanosecond and runs with them. And so yeah, these people will be running out there. There'll be all kinds of memes on social media, etc. Uh, all kinds of of facts, the same that, you know, John F. Kennedy Jr. is coming back. He's still alive. He's the guy that they all go see in Dallas, all that stuff. It'll be the same kind of thing, but it just gets ama more amazing to me what a, how radicalized, it's not that small. This is 15 to 18 percent. That's millions and millions of Americans believe that Taylor Swift is a covert government effort to reelect President Biden. I mean, it, I think the part of why this is going on is because Trump and those guys know, his people know, that just like Taylor Swift, and, you know, she definitely came out against uh, the, you know, Trump and MAGA, you know, in the last uh, election, she's going to do it again. And so they're going to say, yep, see, we told you. And that's why they're going to continue to spread this. And I, but, but this, this one, I don't think is going to, I mean, I think it's already backfiring on them, but we'll see, you know, well, we have to make them feel that pain because <laughs> this is just, you know, we had a, a, an episode on a couple uh, weeks ago about the dumbest campaign, presidential campaign and primary campaign in history. This is one of the dumber, like nominee, you know, somebody's going to probably be the nominee tactics I've ever seen to just move as far away from middle America. I mean, what could be more middle America than, than Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, you know, falling in love during a, you know, a, a season where 
where they, they go to the Super Bowl. You know, I mean, it's, it's just uh, with all those millions, it, it was the highest rated. I think like the only thing that got more views, more television viewers was the moon landing or something like that. I mean, it was like 120 million or 150 million Americans watched it. I think the reason, I mean, yeah, it was a hell of a good game. But I think the reason it broke all those records has a, had a lot more to do with Taylor Swift and and that whole not football, but just sort of a love story feature to the whole thing. Whether it's real or not, I hope so. I'm happy for both of them. That's not my point. My point is why why would you with all uh, that, with with all the evidence that so much of America for whatever reasons loves this? You're going to go try to make this the enemy and and say it's all a plot to reelect Joe Biden is just the dumbest freaking thing I've ever, ever seen. It makes DeSantis look like they were a genius. And that's saying something. Yeah. Oh, and that I think is a very good place for us to end today. OK, thanks, Alex. Thanks, everyone, for listening to that trippy show. Uh, this podcast will always be free with the support from our advertisers. And we, we hope you'll you'll listen to, the, to them and, you know, try them out. And we're part of the Resolute Square effort. Check out the latest at ResoluteSquare.com slash Trippy. Please subscribe to that Trippy show and leave a review on Apple or wherever you listen. Um, last few shows have been among our most listened to. Um, so keep spreading the word. Tell your friends. Uh, give us a listen. And you can always send us a question to that trippy show at gmail.com or leave us a question in a review on iTunes. See you next week. And remember folks, we really are going to win this thing. We just got to do a lot more work to make sure it happens. Resolute Square.